at the Defence and Security Show in Thailand, um, the show for 2023, and I'm here with Tyron Lafferty of Milkor. Tyron, hello, nice to see Hi. you. Nice um, to see can you just explain to us a little bit about um, what your job is and what you do, yep. and also a little bit about Milkor? Sure, yeah. So I'm Tyron Lafferty, I'm looking after the business development in the region. Um, just to give a brief introduction to Milkor, we were established in 1981, so we've been in the business wow. for over 40 years now. And we've basically um, expanded our product range quite drastically. We've always done weapon systems, 40 millimeter grenade launchers. But now we're in the marine field, we have the Milkor IPC, inshore patrol craft. We also have our own Milkor 380 unmanned aerial vehicle, as well as the Milkor 4x4 armored personnel carrier. So I, I, I think you wanted to talk about the Super 6 first. Yes, yeah. So Milkor, we are the world leader in 40 millimeter grenade launcher systems. The Super 6 is our flagship product. Uh, it's got six rounds in the cylinder. That's why we call it the Super 6, because it's super and it's got six rounds. Right. Uh, very versatile, very lightweight for the category of weapon that it is. It can be used as a primary weapon, mostly. So I can quickly just demonstrate to you how to operate the weapon, if you yes, don't mind. Yes, please, that would be good. So you can see it's quite a lightweight weapon. For its, for its caliber, very easy to use. This weapon can fire less lethal grenades, so tear gas, smoke, uh, rubber bullets, those type of application, but it can also handle a low velocity, 40 by 46 caliber, right. as well as the medium velocity, 40 by 51 caliber. So that's sort of civil defense right into the military area. Correct, correct. Right, so it's a very, okay. very versatile weapon. Using the medium velocity ammunition, this weapon can fire all the way up to 800 meters effectively, which okay. is actually double the distance of the low velocity ammunition. Wow, right. Yeah, right. very, very versatile so weapon. if you could show us how you un unlock the case, unlock the... Uh... Sure, very, very easy to operate, very ergonomic as well. Uh, most of our clients always appreciate an ergonomic, comfortable weapon to handle. So to open, you just release underneath the trigger guard here. I see. And simply open the weapon like that and then you'll need to manually wind up the cylinder in order to cock it. So you just turn it all the way until it stops. And then now the weapon is ready to be loaded, you will load in your ammunition, your 40 millimeter grenades. Um, and then, yeah, it's very comfortable. It has an adjustable buttstock, so when you are firing at a far distance, you will elevate uh, the buttstock, adjust the angle, and then you will put right. on the elevation system. We have for medium velocity on the side here and low velocity at the back. So you will see how far away your target is and then you will set the elevation system can, to that distance. Can you demonstrate that? Yeah, uh, so basically how you will fire the weapon like this, the buttstock is parallel with the ground, making it very comfortable for the operator. Right. And then when you fire, you will have to keep both of your eyes open to hit, to see the target. And you're gauging the distance through the side? Correct, yes. Okay. So our buttstock also has a recoil dampener, so when you fire the ah, shot, it actually see. collapses on itself, making it very, very comfortable to operate so the soldier does not get fatigued when they fire too many rounds. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. So I can show you also sort of the operation when the weapon does fire. There's a gas plug here that activates the index mechanism. So when you pull the trigger, it will activate to the next I round. See. That's right. how we get such a rapid rate of fire. We can fire six shots in less than three seconds, depending on the operator. Very. So basically, as fast as fast. you can pull the trigger, that's as fast as the weapon will fire. All right. Very accurate. And what's the difference between this and, and this version? So this one is for the military application, mostly. It can handle the less lethal grenades. Okay. Um, however, it's mostly, mostly for military customers. This one over here is just for law enforcement. This one can only handle the less than lethal grenades. Right, so, so this will CS not be used. gas, that kind of thing? Correct, yeah, yeah. Rubber bullets, so this is for anti-riot, protest, that type of application. This one is more for the, the high explosive application. Okay, yeah. and I think you were going to show? Yeah, and then this one is just our single shot variant. This one can come 37, 38 millimeter, as well as 40 millimeter. Um, and then this one is actually quite unique. Um, this technology came out of Moko. This is an attachment to your assault rifle. So it has an easy slide on um, clip here, okay. slides onto the Picatinny rail and then you release and it locks firmly in place. And then it's got quite a unique um, trigger system. You can notice there's no conventional trigger Indeed. on this weapon. Yeah. We removed the conventional trigger to eliminate the risk of a soldier maybe misfiring the wrong, um, if he wants to fire his assault weapon instead of his time. grenade launcher. So we have a button trigger incorporated. 
This also reduces the weight of this weapon because if it's at the front of your rifle, you don't want it too heavy. Right. So we've reduced the weight. This is one of the lightest UBGLs on the market. So I can show you to open. You just pull back on this lever here and you twist open to the side. And now the weapon is cocked. You will load your round inside. And then to fire this um, button trigger has a safety lever on it. So you cannot accidentally fire no, the, yeah. the weapon. You have to lift up push on up. the safety and then yeah. you push. Oh, and I then got it fires. It. Interesting. So very, very unique, very, very nice addition to your Great, thank you awesome. for the demonstration. Welcome, welcome. Hi, we're now with James Cottrell of the Naval Defence Solutions Division. Um, James, tell me, what's the division about and what's your role in it? Uh, so I'm head of the Marine uh, Projects Division and uh, we essentially cover all naval and maritime solutions and products within local group. Uh, we're quite recently launched launching our first product, the Mulcore IPC, at IDEX 2023. And uh, we've really put together a good team, naval architects and marine engineers, aiming to be a full uh, services solution provider right. within the naval and maritime space. So this has been um, developed and brought to the market quite quickly, I think. Uh, yes, the project started in, uh, in late 2021, and then it was launched in early 2023. So oh, about right. a 14-month timeline. Wow, that's, yeah. that's, that's rapid. What, what are the uh, particular uh, features that you'd like to point out on the IPC? So the key features of this IPC is that it is a catamaran-assisted hydrofoil design that is right. made of uh, fiber composite. And okay. what this allows you to do is have really excellent cruise performance because once you get up onto the foil at about 30 knots, your fuel consumption drops significantly. And it gives you really, really good range, good endurance okay. and good speed within a very small package. It's only a 12 meter long craft but it can reach up to 50 knots, up to 750 nautical miles of range, and five-day endurance with a crew of four. Is this um, more a littoral craft? Is it riverine as well? Uh, it can operate in a riverine environment, um, but it is more optimized for the littoral, um, for the littoral environment. How do you think um, a craft like this would appeal to the, the local uh, regional market? I think this craft is really, really good for any sort of maritime security operation. Anytime we have issues with piracy, illegal fishing, um, or perhaps smuggling, the ability to loiter in an area for five days, to go that far right. to intercept, uh, to have good surveillance uh, equipment on this mast here, uh, that, that really enables you to get good coverage of an area. And with a 12 meter vessel, you can get that at really quite a low cost. So the Southeast Asian region does have quite a few issues with uh, illegal fishing, yeah. um, with other maritime security threats. So I think this is a really good, really uh, really efficient solution for meeting those threats so it's not only naval but it's coast guard ez protection that exactly kind of thing. ideal for coast guard customs anyone who needs to do any sort of surveillance or policing in a right. maritime environment like piracy you're keeping an eye on that or smuggling exactly. that exactly. kind of thing yeah um you mentioned sort of um the potential turret on there can you have a range of turrets or is it uh yes um so it's designed to accommodate a variety of payloads, two points on the roof, the forward point and the mast, as well as a variety of payloads on the rear. Okay. On the rear, we can fit up to one ton worth of payload. The mast is highly configurable. We can make it taller or shorter as required right. and fits a variety of radars, uh, EOIR gimbals on as well. And the forward uh, roof point can fit a remote control weapon station or a very large radar as is shown here. Right, interesting. So again, this is one of your latest developments. Yes. Um, tell us about it. So this was started in 2019. Uh, the goal was to produce a uh, class four male UAV in South Africa. And uh, it's something that we've succeeded in. We are currently busy with our uh, flight certification and yeah. flight testing regime. So we're really proud of the progress that the, te that the team has made and all the hard work that has gone in. And uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to this platform as we think it's a very good platform. So it can be used in ISR or as shown here, you can actually have weapons on board as well. Exactly. You have a maximum payload capacity with full fuel load of 210 kilograms. So that gives you the room to put in a really nice set of uh, sensors, yep. such as uh, high-grade EOIR gimbals, also synthetic aperture radar and electronic warfare. 
but it also gives you the payload capacity to put on uh, armaments such as glide bombs, uh, laser guided right. rockets and uh, anti-tank guided missiles. Can you say what a typical range might be? So typically you're looking at a maximum range of about 4,000 kilometers okay. uh, one way with a communications range with line of sight of 250 kilometers. Interesting. However, right. it is also compatible with satellite communications, which extends the range to, uh, to a very large radius, depending on the satellite use. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Thank you very much, James, Tyron. Uh, we've enjoyed having a look around the Millcore stand and the new products that you brought here. So very good luck with the uh, Defence and Security Exhibition here in Thailand and uh, look forward to uh, hearing the results. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot from, about our company and our products. And you did. Thank you for your time. That's all. So look at www.asianmilitaryreview.com and www.milcore.com.